Welcome, in this video we're gonna be talking about the mega backdoor Roth contribution, one of the most powerful wealth building activities out there. Um, this is gonna carry forward from where we left off with the backdoor Roth contribution video we recently recorded. Uh, so if you haven't seen that one already, definitely recommend you check that out. Now the mega backdoor Roth contribution, why we're doing that second. Number one, it's unfortunately not available to everyone. So there's some certain requirements um, in place that you have to make sure that you're actually going to even be able to do this strategy. And I'll explain what those are. Um, and it also is definitely for those of you at kind of that next level of income threshold or uh, for those of you who have a really tight grip on your savings and are generating significant excess cash flow that you're looking to put to work towards investment opportunity. So if that applies, this is going to be of a lot of interest to you. My name is Rick Baza. I'm president of Driven Wealth Management, a financial planning and investment management firm here in San Diego, California, where we help clients confidently grow and protect their wealth. Uh, this being a, a crucial type of strategy uh, for those, as I mentioned, particularly on that high income space. Uh, so what exactly is the mega backdoor Roth contribution? Well, as I mentioned, there are certain requirements that need to be met. Uh, one of which uh, that we'll start with is the requirement to have a 401k, okay? So in order to take advantage of the strategy, kind of the first step is a 401k. I know not everyone has one, so unfortunately, um, that is where we're going to start. Uh, but if you do have one, uh, keep listening. And so after the 401k, you are going to have to ask your HR department if the plan allows for what are called in-service Either there's kind of two forms here, either rollovers, or we might even want to call them just transitions. Okay, I'll explain what exactly that means and what that is. So, if if your plan, if the plan allows for it, the um, 401k again, you're going to ask your HR part, uh, department if they allow for it. It's kind of a flip of the coin, honestly. About half, some of the plans probably 50% do, some of them don't. Um, so it's kind of one of those things that you, you may not have access to this, unfortunately, but if you do, it can be great. Um, so if you do have access to it, what exactly this means is, and you're more familiar probably with the idea of when you started your contributions, you had the option of making what are called traditional, or now in many plans, they're offering also Roth contributions. You kind of had the option uh, maybe you're doing both, maybe you're doing one. What many people aren't aware of is there's actually a third option typically available called the after-tax contribution. And I'll explain how that comes into play here um, in a second. So the after-tax contribution uh, is very important, and that's really what you are going to be taking advantage of in order to uh, utilize and successfully complete this mega backdoor Roth contribution. Now, with the plan, uh, traditionally, you are limited in a 401k plan if you're under the age of 50 uh, to an annual contribution of $19,500. Now, this is interesting because this is the deferral amount that you, the employee, can make. But the IRS actually says, well, we're going to allow you to put $57,000, and this is for 2020, um, into the plan, and that's between you and your employer. So the maximum amount that can go into that single plan is 57,000. Well, so naturally there's a pretty big gap, right, between these two figures. So where does that come from? Well, as I mentioned, a portion of it uh, can be uh, from your employer contribution. Well, really the whole thing could in theory be from your employer contributions. Uh, that's often not the case for everyone. Uh, you know, normally you'll see something like maybe an employer match of anywhere from, you know, three to 7%. So even for many high income earners, you know, a match of three to 7% uh, is still likely not going to fill that gap, you know, if they're only able to contribute that 19,500, right? So there's an additional amount. And I have an example that I'm going to show you of what that amount looks like. And that gap that ultimately gets filled between what your employer is matching, if anything, some of you might not even have a match, but if anything, um, versus what you're able to defer, that gap is filled by this after tax contribution. So it, to, to explain and, and kind of showcase this a little bit, let me jump over to uh, this little Excel diagram I did here. Um, and let's just assume again, this strategy works really well for those of you that are in that high income threshold. Um, so I have someone here that's making 250 grand a year. Uh, their employer is in this case matching them dollar for dollar, 3%. So that's a $7,500 match. 
they've maxed out, they're under the age of 50, they've maxed out their $19,500 deferral. And because they're able to put $57,000 into the plan, we have to um, subtract that 57,000. Uh, we have to subtract 19.5 and 7.5 from that, which basically means that gap, what they're trying to fill is $30,000 worth. And that 30,000 can be filled through after-tax contributions. And now this is where the mega backdoor Roth enters the conversation. So what we want to then figure out is if we can make $30,000 of after-tax contributions, and I'll kind of draw this out for us. So in this example, right, with 30K available, this goes into its own separate, it's kind of like a non-deductible IRA, which I explained in that uh, previous Backdoor Roth uh, video, uh, works very similar. So what we want to do is basically try to get this 30,000 from after-tax to Roth as quickly as possible. And the reason for that, as you'll remember, is the Roth gives you the ability for completely tax-free growth, whereas the non-deductible contribution, uh, which is similar to a non-deductible IRA, so that after-tax contribution, which works just about the same, uh, is tax-deferred on the earnings. So meaning your, the contributions that you put in are not gonna be taxed but the earnings on those contributions when that money is invested will be taxed, the earnings and income. So I'm sure you'd all agree we'd, we'd rather not have it tax deferred and get it tax free. So we want to get it over to Roth as quickly as possible. So in order to do that, there's essentially two potential processes. The first is the transition within the account itself. So in some cases, uh, you'll be able to transition this money directly. Uh, and this again, you should ask your HR department if this is possible, where you can move the money directly in within the 401k, so you're never leaving the 401k, uh, and you're simply converting that over from the after-tax portion into the Roth bucket of your 401k plan. Great from an administrative process, uh, it's just an internal journal entry, so you're just moving that money over, and then it can be invested uh, just like it was in that uh, in that bucket previously, so now you're going to have all of that tax-free participation. Now, in the event that your plan doesn't allow for just an in-service uh, transition like that, um, the follow-up is the rollover. And so if the plan allows you for in-service distributions, uh, what you could potentially then look to do is have that after-tax portion and just that after-tax portion uh, rolled out of the account into the Roth IRA. And so the Roth IRA works the same way with the ta from a tax standpoint as the Roth 401k, so you'd still be able to invest that money and grow it potentially tax-free. Now though, you have left the 401k plan and you've moved that money specifically into the IRA. Um, that depends again on your 401k provider, what they're going to allow. This is though referred to as an in-service distribution, uh, so in-service, meaning you are able to do this even while you're still working at the company. So some plans will only allow you to take that money out once you've left the company. Um, so again, this is a great thing to check because if you do have the option available to you, this can be really, really powerful, right? Because before we were capped at 19,500 that could go directly in here. We were capped at 6,000 that could go directly in here. And at, by implementing this process, you've now spilled over another $30,000 in just this example of what could then flow through there. And so just to highlight again how powerful that can be, so you know, if you're a young individual, and let's say you're you know, in your 40s, uh, so we'll just say this uh, client age is 40, and again, they're potentially not, this is the example I used before, uh, distribution age, Let's just give them, uh, we'll say 65, so they've got 25 years of growth. You'll recall on even a simple IRA contribution where it was $6,000, uh, what is the potential future value of that money? Well, if we throw you know, just a reasonable 8% return uh, for long-term investment uh, over that 25 years, and we're adding in the $6,000 per year on the IRA, you know, almost half a million dollars of completely tax-free money. 
an amazing thing. Well, now what we've done, right, is the same type of concept here, but we've magnified this process so significantly. So if we apply that same rate of 8%, that same, let's just say 25 years, but now instead of just 6,000, we have the uh, 30,000 um, that's being added in. Um, so we could even actually call this 36,000. Um, well, and we and on top of that, we'd actually have the uh, the regular 19,500. So I'll do another one with this example, but just so you can see the added benefit, we'll do both of them. Oh, and remember that is going to be a, a negative amount because we're putting it in each year. Uh, crazy numbers, right? So 2.6 million dollars completely tax free. Uh, all right, now for the sake of the example, let's just let's just add all of them. So you have. Uh, and then we'll do strictly on the uh, tax-free basis because you'll recall that your employer contributions in this example are always going to be pre-tax. So that 3% match is pre-tax. So in this case, I just want to show you what the, uh, the completely tax-free component would be uh, of this money. So again, let's just assume an 8% return, 25 years. In this case, we did our full 19500 towards the Roth. Uh, we did um, uh, 6000 and we did uh, 30,000, so that is $55,500. And that's uh, negative because we're putting it into the account each year. $4 million of completely tax-free money. So this can be extremely powerful. Um, again, not everyone has access to this, but if you do, you can see why it would be so important. You know, if you're someone who's sitting on $30,000 of excess cash flow each year, and currently you have that going towards something like, you know, just a, a regular investment account, a savings account, if it's just sitting there, you know, earning nothing right now, there could be much better uses for that money if you're able to um, you know, take advantage of this type of opportunity set. So this is the powerful type of planning that we're doing on a regular basis with our clients and helping them understand what the options are that are available to them. Um, I'd encourage, you know, if this is a scenario that you fall into and you weren't aware of that, reach out. You know, this is just one of a handful of these types of opportunity sets uh, that we're working on. And we'd love to talk with people like yourselves who are interested in really taking control of their financial futures. Hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section. I'd love to engage with anyone who's watching these videos. Um, and look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks again.